before we do that, uh, let me just say okay. we want to thank God first of all for our Keep Reaching Foundation and the Gospel Kaleidoscope. And uh, we still cannot say enough about how the Lord has joined the Keep Reaching Foundation with the Lou Brock uh, Scholarship Foundation. Praise the Lord. And we, we just are still excited about oh, it. Oh, we're very excited <laughs> about it. Yes, Lord. Yes. God is doing wonderful things. We're looking forward to uh, raising funds to yes. help young people be able to go to school. Yes. And I know that our guest today has also done a great oh. work in that area, too. Yes, mm -hmm. he's, uh, well, I don't want to let it go. We'll talk no, about that yeah. later. <laughs> but uh, we are very excited about uh, youth mm -hmm. that is working with us mm -hmm. in this Lou Brock Foundation. Yeah, the Youth Viewpoint Youth group. Viewpoint, Yes, right. hallelujah. And we just uh, excited about it. They are still excited about it. So we just, Lou Brock, he's back home now from his spring well, training. praise the Lord. So no doubt we might help, be able to help him and uh, Sister uh, Jacqueline to come back on with us real soon. But well, praise the Lord. as you said, we are excited about today's yes. guest. I just had to say that because it's a blessing for the Keep Reaching Foundation to team up with the uh, Lou Brock Scholarship Foundation. Yes, but Lord. Uh, the um, guest for today, mm -hmm. you know, in Psalms, Psalms 37, I'm not sure, I think it's Psalms 37, 4, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of right, your God. heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have had a great desire to do what we are about to do for a long time. Oh, yes, hallelujah. And God will, in his time, mm -hmm. and not in my time, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, a lot of times <laughs> we want to we wanna set things to happen when we want them All to happen. Right mm -hmm. But in God's own time, mm -hmm. he will allow these things to happen. Yes. And I've had a desire to uh, interview this uh, very outstanding person for yes. a long time. And through the Keep Reaching Foundation and the Gospel Kaleidoscope, we are able to do it. And I just want to thank the Lord right now Amen. for having our special guest, one yes. that I, I look up to and thank so much of. Uh, have for years and he probably don't know himself how much a lot of us oh, yes. care and think of him so excited. and that's the Reverend Dr. Cleophus Robinson. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Reverend Robinson. Praise God Brother Gregory. Yes. How good. are you? Fine thank you. Good to have you here. We're just excited about it. It's a great blessing to be here. I thank God for allowing me the privilege to be able to come out and speak a word for him because all you do you're supposed to do it to the glory and honor of God. Amen. Amen. I know this is probably the first time you have uh, met Sister Cherie Gallagher, but she is beginning to be a great person, pioneer yes. in the St. Louis area, mm -hmm. uh, reaching out, trying to do things for the community, and she wants to let some light shine on. You know, the Bible tells us to honor those whom honor is due. Right. And, and we want to bring in the, in the forefront those that have paved the way for so many we have so many young people out here now that is trying to get where you have gotten and right. go where you've gone Hallelujah. so uh, yes. we just want to you to share with us uh some things that the how the lord have blessed you and you've been going since when your first recording first recording 1949 now All right. we're preparing session uh, down for 1999 which would be 50 years all right and of course <clears throat> i'm grateful uh, to God for what he has done. I said to our congregation on our broadcast this past Sunday, you know, uh, sometimes Satan says to me, due to the fact that I've made so many records these uh, 49 years that I've done enough to make no more. But uh, so many people, as I said this past Sunday, uh, pay companies to record them. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess since God has done so much for me, I just head on until I can't go no more. <laughs> all right. Oh, uh, God is good. And uh, when I think about all of the records that I've made down through, the, down through the years, it's amazing how God has kept me. Uh, but one thing I, I do know that uh, I'd like to say to all of the uh, upcoming singers, uh, make sure you know what you really want to be mm -hmm. and you know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, I never want to change from where I am. Uh -huh. and a lot of the gospel giants that I started with years ago, they switched over. Uh -huh. But I always wanted to be this old plain gospel singer. Right. And uh, then in my later years, God called me into the ministry, and uh, what a combination. Uh -huh. and, mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, so, so know what you want to be and be sincere. Right. That's the most important thing because that from the heart reaches the heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, people know what they feel. Mm -hmm. It's like you know what you hear, you know what you feel on the inside. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, praise the Lord. I think that's a wonderful inspiration for our singers that we have out here because it's true. Uh, it's not more than just singing. Uh, the gospel singing is a ministry that right. must come from the heart. Right. Okay. right. Reverend Robinson, he um, has sang with some of the greatest uh, singers, you know, of our times. Do you think that that ever be another female vocalist like Sister Mahalia Jackson? Well, uh, I, I know can't, you sing along with her, probably. Yeah, I can't see the future, but uh, in every gen generation, people look clean to people they uh, come along with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to us, uh, for instance, uh, uh, in the secular world, uh, Nobody was ever like Joe Lewis to me, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, Joe Lewis was the first uh, band that I heard about as a boxer down in Mississippi, where I originated from. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, when I first got a chance to see Joe Lewis in 1948, I was living in Chicago at that time. I had just been there a few months, and they had, the, I think, the Bill Bill Bulkin Parade. I think I'm saying mm -hmm. it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I saw Joe Lewis, it just fascinated me, and uh, I stood there about 10 minutes, and I broke out running to go see him again. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, why I'm saying that, uh, I don't, in our generation, there, right. won't, there won't be nobody else that would ever touch her, uh, her zenith, because uh, uh, the publicity that she had, and right. uh, she was the first singer that went on nationwide television and mm -hmm. so it just first always has its uh its place always have its mode oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so uh but in coming years we we don't know what god you know what god, right so we won't we won't be here well um we know that uh there are so many artists now they're they just you too, know i'd like to say too many <laughs> <laughs> they, there's so many until you know uh that naturally will make it harder for anyone right. to, to receive that plateau that she, she gained. Right, and then of course, uh, you know, they're pioneers, and uh, nobody ever takes the place of the pioneers, so we just, keep, well, the right. Bible says one man plant a seed and others build on, mm -hmm. and that's the way it goes, you know. And everybody have their place. Oh yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. have their place. But uh, there has to be a trailblazer. Some of the artists that you've sang with, such as Mahalia and Well Chief, I had Mahalia here in my home back in '64 when I presented her at the Tequila Auditorium, and I don't know for some reason I was thinking about it yesterday. You know, mm -hmm. we had over to the house, and my wife was a fantastic cook, and uh, we had collard greens and candy yams and mm -hmm. a lot of different stuff, and uh, of course uh, <laughs> it was a great. Uh, blessing to uh, have her and uh, and uh, well the late Joe me he was a great singer Alex Bradford and uh, right. uh, what man. about just Clara Ward oh yeah I, I, I knew Clara when I lived in Memphis back in the late 40s and early mm -hmm. 50s mm -hmm. and of course uh, Clara was a great admirer of Cleopas Robinson she and her mother Mother Gert Gertrude mm -hmm. but they all gone and, yes. and then the many are gone and those of us who are back here, all of us, we are on our way. Amen. Amen. Can you stay here? There was a one recording you had, and uh, I was told that when you went to Houston, it was just like a sellout. Uh, yeah, well, that, that, that probably yeah. was the time when... Uh, New York. I was on television down there, mm -hmm. and the uh, Clouds of Joy, uh, along with another gentleman, I can't think of his name right now, uh, they brought me in for... Uh, an appearance there. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know uh, my status in that area, uh, but the TV program hadn't been on very long, and we had about 11,000 people in the uh, auditorium, and they held me from 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night, and when I came on the stage, uh, when they, they made me last, uh, in order that the people wouldn't leave, and of course, when I came on, uh, they just, the policemen had to uh, 
full of people back there. They just getting by their seat, literally. Yes, they yes. coming down to, I just want to touch me or whatever. But God has been good, and yes. uh, all of all of the things of this life, nothing really means means very much unless you got Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah, material things and the accolades that I received across the world, and uh, it, it's all right. Uh, but the uh, most important thing is when you save and you when you're nearing the end of the journey. As I said to people, or all of us, I might be around here another 10 or 15 years, but I know I don't have as long mm -hmm. as I have had. That's right, all of us. But all yeah. of those of us who used to farm in Mississippi, when you got near to, to chop and cut, <laughs> 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 you look out across the field and say, well, another day, or a couple of days, we'll be through. So that's what it is with life. Yes. But uh, God is good. He has taken me across this world, and he has uh, through me opened the doors for many other. Uh, because I promised God uh, back in the late 40s, I was living in Chicago then, when I had first left Mississippi. I didn't know there was jealousy among gospel artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would want to sing so bad, and I'd go really hoping they would call on me, but they look look seemingly over me and get call everybody else. And I, I would leave the auditorium sometime, and I'd stand on State Street waiting on the uh, on the streetcar, and then safety zone. I'd stand there, and I'd sing, and I'd cry. Because that uh, zeal that I had for performing, it was there. And that's why I've tried to help so many right. artists, so many preachers, you so many have. singers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a gift for doing something, it's... It's just like every, it just, you have a urge to do yes, it. Yes, yes. Because when I lived in Memphis in the early days, I sang a lot around the house because I uh, I didn't get a chance to uh, to let my talent out like I supposed to. Mm -hmm. So I had to let it out somewhere. Right. So that's why I helped a lot of singers and preachers because it's terrible to want to do something and the people don't call on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I promised God back in those days uh, when I was a teenager, that if he would elevate me, I'd help others. So right. that's why I have reached out and helped so many people. You know, God helps all of us, and a lot of people get him. So a lot of people that I've helped, you know, they act like I hadn't existed, but that's all right. All right, right but whatever I do, I do it out of my heart. I know so. you helped a lot of uh, groups to get on recording. Only the, 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 the Peacock. Yeah, O'Neill Twins. O'Neill Twins. Or the first. Right group that I introduced to the record label, Peacock Records. Right. I think they, their first song was Make Me a Blessing. Right. I had it. Yeah. Still yeah. Had it. Yeah. 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 Still had it. Oh, yeah. And then uh, you helped so many of us when you uh, started your TV program. Yeah. Uh, all of us uh, appeared on your TV show. 1964. I stayed on for 25 years. Right. A lot of hard work, but payday is not down here. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. right. days, not down here. And he has a lovely family. He's a, a wonderful family man, and uh, we can't say enough about how he has uh, reared his children. They they all are in church, and there's been some miracles happening uh, in the family. Oh, yes. Uh, well, the first miracle uh, back in 69, uh, when my wife had that uh, serious accident mm -hmm. on the Interstate 70, the car, uh, she was thrown from the car from one side of the expressway to the other side. And, uh, of course, she could have been an invalid the rest of her life, but right. the, that God worked uh, a miracle. Right. right. And then, uh, 19, 19, uh, well, Linda had a, right. a bad uh, experience, but God protected her. Amen. Mm -hmm. So uh, he has he has done great things and uh, I'm grateful because uh, you know to try to look at after some uh, an individual that is incapacitated is very very difficult mm -hmm. and it would have been a great strain on my ministry but I thank God yeah. for all that he's done. I wonder did he know before he married Sister Robinson, Bertha could she sing 
as well as she sing now? Cause she, was well, she a great singer then? I, yes, she was singing with, uh, with her group, uh, her sisters, uh -huh. the Thomas sisters, and uh, she sang very well, but you know, the older you get, the more you develop, and <laughs> after, I guess, after you, you start singing more automatically, you know. Well, she was just a teenager when I married her, so mm -hmm. uh, as the years go by, you, you get better, you get worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's getting better. You know, I, I would remember that uh, the Bethlehem Choir back with Sister Janice Smith yeah, and Caritha Bell. and Lift him up. Oh, my goodness. Get my feet on high ground. Yes. What was that, Golden Bells? Uh, oh, that, that's his birth tomorrow. We're singing when you ring the, when you ring the, when you ring the Golden Bell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you probably remember those days, Sister Sherry. You probably was a young lady, but... Very young. <laughs> very young. That the Lord was dealing with my life, too. And it, one of the reasons was because of ministers like Reverend Clevers Robinson, because mm -hmm. that was what was ringing through the house. Yes. Around the yes. clock. Mom kept yeah, going. Well, his... Mom would actually get in there and sing with him. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, that's very important that our young people do have that role modeling. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important for us to be able to have the opportunity for programs like this to be able to go out of the community so that our young people get a chance to know about how good God is from a personal testimony. Right, right. Reverend Robinson, I'd like to ask you something. Mm -hmm. I know through the years, uh, as you have grown and developed in your relationship with God, mm -hmm. you've had many experiences. Um, one of the things that the Key Reaching Foundation is addressing is um, the supportiveness to our family life. Uh, we see that um, there's a lot of pressure taking place inside of the homes, and I know you know that from dealing with so many people mm -hmm. um, and tearing up homes and, and, and just tragedies taking place. Uh, with so many people out there that are experiencing tragedies, and I, I know personally from the news, just recently we've had some very great tragedies mm -hmm. in some homes. Um, can you say something to that public out there about what your experience has been in the tragic um, tragedies that you've experienced. And I know you've experienced not only maybe a personal tragedy or people you know having tragedies, something that might reach somebody's heart to help them to know that in the midst of a tragedy, they can reach out to God. Well, uh, this past Sunday, I preached from uh, Second Corinthians and uh, the scripture says, when I'm weak, and I'm strong. Mm -hmm. Uh, Paul had uh, transforming vision and was carried to the third heaven and uh, he saw things unspeakable, not lawful or bespoken among men. Mm -hmm. And of course he had a thorn in his flesh that he had prayed to God about to move three times and God didn't move but he said his grace is sufficient. So in the time of tragedy, uh, that's all I can say to uh, yeah. every person that's listening. God's grace is sufficient. It is. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, a lot of the things that's happening, this is uh, not the question that you asked. So I've addressed that. Mm -hmm. God's grace is sufficient. But uh, a lot of the things that's happening in our world today is simply because it's man has walked away from God. Mm -hmm. Offense on the tragedy that we had down in uh, Jonesboro, uh -huh. Paducah, Kentucky, and you never, you never heard of such things happening at a school because years ago, uh, when we were children, we looked up to those school teachers and we looked up to the preacher, uh -huh. and of course we looked up to the undertaker, uh -huh. <laughs> the elderly people. Yeah, uh -huh. we looked up to the elderly people, and but uh, this new crowd, uh, they don't want God. All right. And uh, that's what I, well, I'd i like to take part of this time that I have here on your beautiful gospel Scalario, I guess I'm saying right. Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope, mm -hmm. right. And of course, uh, Sherry Gallagher, you have a nice voice. Well, thank you. And uh, this program, uh, it, I hope it will reach some persons who don't have God on your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a scripture in Proverbs, the third chapter. It says, my son, don't forget my law, bind it around your neck. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says, if you if you keep my commandments, if you listen, it'll lengthen your days and your life will be long. Mm -hmm. So 
So uh, the only thing I know that's the cause of all of the problems that we have in our world is going to get worse because people don't want they don't want God no more. Right. Uh -huh. They don't. They're not churchy. They they call that uh, uh, old fogism. Right. Uh -huh. Right. But I I've, I've been with the Lord 53 years as being saved, uh -huh. and I wouldn't take nothing for it. Amen. Every day the journey gets sweeter. Every day. Right. And uh, the young people out there, if you want a peaceful life, get God's word in your heart. All right. And I, I was reading this morning about uh, uh, flee youthful lust. He ain't said nothing about the old folks. <laughs> youthful. Right. Youthful. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. so right. when you're young, it's dangerous. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, uh, I'm going to search further into that youthful lust. When you, you know, when people get older, you should have more sense. And uh, uh, when you get older, there, that's that's not too too many things out there that you're lusting for like you did when you were young. Right. So. Uh -huh. Well, All right. well, you know, Reverend Robinson, we realize that there are so many middle-aged and young people that they don't really know some of the great accomplishments, and that's what we are trying to bring forth this morning. You sang at the White House. Well, uh, 19, uh, 1980, uh, he was 80, on President uh, Jimmy Carter's re-election, I was uh, one of the uh, people that were selected to go around campaigning for his re-election. Mm -hmm. So while we were in Washington, there were gathering of the preachers together, and uh, in the East Room there, right. we, uh, we we sang. Uh, they started off Amazing Grace, and by me being known, and of course, I just I hit it, and they called me on up on the stage, and and uh, this voice from Mississippi, Amazing Grace. <laughs> it, 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 it thought it was at, at Greater Bethlehem. Oh then. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't know the oh, White House. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, all of those things, I, I've been, I, and then down in uh, Miami Beach, Florida, with the president, I have a picture where we uh, were there at the NAACP, President Carter, and uh, they had me just saying, "We shall overcome," and he's standing life and you know, grinning, looking at me because I, I guess, the sound of my voice. And the next morning, we were on the front page of the Miami. Herald, I think that's the name of the mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. In fact, about this, that same picture was in Time Magazine with the president. Okay. Yeah, so, but the most important thing, I, most important thing that I know, I've been with the law. Amen. Amen. What, tell us a little about uh, the Holy Land. Uh, well, I've had the uh, experience of going to the Holy Land for four times. My first trip to Jerusalem was in 1967 after completing uh, the tour there in uh, Belgium, not Belgium, uh, Berlin, Berlin, Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, Josephine and the other group and my late musician, they came back uh, to America and I caught a plane from uh, Berlin the next morning and uh, back to Frankfurt, Germany and into Jerusalem. And uh, it was so much different then than what it is now. Mm -hmm. Until I really, I really couldn't sleep at night. I would just walk the, walk the streets of Jerusalem and I would just cry, thinking about this the way it all began. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, then later in 19, let me see, first time, 67, next time, 1976, uh, I took a caravan of people over there and uh, and there I performed at the Hebrew University and I received the Israeli flag and from the people had a great, great time and of course I've been on there four times and but it, I, just, I was just over there two years ago and it's much different now it's so so much commercializing and it's just not the sacredness is not there like it was in '67. Uh, the album that uh, because he lived that that was recorded in uh, Montreux, Switzerland, 1975. Mm -hmm. uh, I was guest on the International Jazz Festival. And of course, uh, that's where it was recorded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I I still have that, and that's that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because he lived, we can face tomorrow. Oh yeah, oh yeah, beautiful. That's one of my favorite tunes. Uh, the family went once, didn't they? Mm, no, not as a family. Not as a family. But my boys went with me, Paul and Greg Clover Robinson Jr. They went 
uh, because two was playing the organ and Shadrach was playing the, I mean, Paul was playing the drum. That was in 1975. That's when I was recorded from, uh, mm -hmm. from Montreux, Switzerland. They were there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We listened to your program on Saturdays and many times you, you make it quite humorous. So I guess it wouldn't be right unless we put a little humor in the gospel kaleidoscope today. Tell us about Paul. How did he get the name Paul Cadillac? Uh, <laughs> well, Paul Cadillac came about uh, uh, when he came into the world. Uh, well, I suppose he was going to be born in July. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but he came in the latter part of June, and of course, when I knew the thing, she said, you better hurry up. And <laughs> so, I said, I thought you were supposed to be going in July. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we rushed out. Uh, we were living on cabin at that time. You know, I rushed out on on the Union and the Union and the Delmar. But hurry up! I'm a long way from the hospital, so I started speeding up, so nothing. So that's what happened. We got there to the hospital and uh, already delivered. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah well, well, I did delivered it. Oh, you did. Mm -hmm. You delivered it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had had a vision about it before you ever conceived, and just like what I saw in my vision, that's what you look. God has done, showed me a lot of things, and he's worked a lot of things in my ministry. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that's what, where the name Paul came from. Now, the Cadillac... Then she, uh, she was driving the Cadillac. Yes, yeah, so she ever, uh, <laughs> one of our late members said, you know, called him Cadillac, so after he got a certain age, he liked it, so we just put it, just called him Paul Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. I tell you. Well, it, it has been a joy. We've programmed so many great artists mm -hmm. down through mm -hmm. the years. But uh, it has really been a joy to program an artist here at home that mm -hmm. I know, that I see. Right. Uh, you know, that we can commune and talk with, you know. Mm -hmm. And it has been a joy to program all my hip. I remember <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. All my hip comes from the Lord. I wrote that in the year of the 60s. All my help comes from the Lord. That's another thing I was going to mention, too. When you listen to him, he can tell you where, he, if, if he was on, on a wagon, mm -hmm. <laughs> in a plane, uh, uh, I <laughs> he see. know where oh, he, yes. he wrote the song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Pray for me it was the first song that I wrote. I had just left my musician's house uh, between 3rd and uh, 3rd Avenue in Vance uh, in Memphis. I knew anything, I was singing it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, don't try to write nothing just from the top of your head. head. If you want it to really last, let it come directly from the fountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Reverend Jones, Arthur Jones, uh, pastor of Liberty Baptist Church, said to me a couple of years ago, I never thought about it like that. He said, Doubt you wrote a song that they'd be singing when Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I thank God for yes. whatever I am is by the grace of God. Yes. What, I am what I am. What about the Pray For Me with you and Sister Josephine? Oh, yeah, well, that, that's that's the big hit. And we have to say something about Sister Josephine. Yeah, too. yeah, I talked to her this morning, and that's the big hit. Well, see, we were getting ready to do a session. I really wasn't happy with what I had. We had uh, Savior Lead Me Lest I Stray and something else. And I left my musician's house, uh, and instantaneously, as I said, on Vance and Third Avenue, near Vance, uh, uh, near Third, uh, this song, when I knew anything, I was singing. I was humming, pray for me. That's how it came. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's a universal song. A lot of people have recorded it. Oh, yeah. I made many, many more, but that was the first one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, when uh, Josephine got to, I was living in Memphis at the time. When she got to Memphis, we started rehearsing on new tune and the other stuff. And uh, that, oh, Lord, oh, she put that in. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we made it on the first cut. Mm -hmm. Pray for me. Uh, and then Evelyn, one of the executives of Peacock Records, he wanted me to put Oh Lord on it. So then we went back and cut it the next time. Okay. And I put Oh Lord, pray for me. But uh, we had we had done it on the first cut. Mm -hmm. Just power. Yes. Minds together. And where there's unity, there's strength. Yes. And of course, it just we was just charged up. See, back in those days. Uh, 
looked like people were more, well, people were more religious than they are now. Uh -huh. Prosperity has been a dangerous source of leading so many people away from God. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. And that's why we feel that the Lord it doesn't uh, permit many of us to be so successful. Some people can't stand it. Yes. And uh, it leads a lot of people away from God. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Well, I tell you, it's so much uh, <laughs> that we can learn from just listening to Reverend oh, Cleopas yes. Robinson, mm -hmm. our guest on Gospel Kaleidoscope today, Reverend Dr. Cleopas Robinson, not only a great singer, but also a great preacher, and his uh, many, many recordings, preaching and singing mm -hmm. uh, recordings, and uh, we, we just have really enjoyed him. You've just been a blessing to so many people down through the years. Praise God, praise God. We're getting ready. Well, you know, Greater Bethlehem Baptist Church, where I've been pastor for 41 years. Mm -hmm. Within the next uh, 40, next four to five days, we should start our building project. I, I led the congregation into building a home for the elderly. Wonderful. Praise the and Lord. And of course, uh, I, I want to thank uh, Sherry Gallagher mm -hmm. uh, for all of the uh, picking me up in the beautiful limousine and uh, uh, it would be nice if y'all could do that with me for groundwork and serious uh, uh, you'll be hearing more about it but uh, I'm so grateful to God for what he has done and if this is going to be it should get get started next month sometime mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. also you have a church anniversary is that church oh, pastor? no, pastor pastoral anniversary. anniversary 41 years 41 years uh -huh. and when, when uh, what date is that well starting the Monday after Mother's Day Monday after Mother's Day. Yeah, and in the third Sunday in May. Mm -hmm. yeah, 41 years. 41 years. Yes. Amen. That has been good. Amen. Cherie, uh, that's a service that I'm sure you probably would want to attend. Oh, I would love to. Yes. Yes, yeah, a part of my history, Reverend Cleveland Robinson is. Praise God. And I would be looking forward to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. God. That's one thing, let me say this, I know our time is about up, but that's one of the thing that has given me great consolation as a, as a singer. And as a preacher, across the nation, I run into people your age and younger and a little older. That says, oh, my mother loved you, my father loved you, you Cleopas Robinson, and Josephine Jane. This is to be greater than what a lot of the great superstars have done on the other side. Because to know and to see people who say that my mother loved you, they're going on to glory. And, but they loved you. So mm -hmm. as she said, I'm part of her history. That that's that's encouraging to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because the greatest joy I know is to know the Lord. Amen. Amen. Columbus. Well we all Columbus. need to be. Yeah. I like to uh, ask Dr. Robinson one more thing and I know mm -hmm. that uh, he will feel very strongly about this too. Our young people need to um, understand how important education is for them. And uh, that's part of what we're trying to do right. with being supportive to the Lou Brock Scholarship Foundation is to uh, access funds to be able to help young people that are not able to afford a scholarship, uh, to afford to go to college, and also may not um, qualify for a scholarship elsewise. Right. And uh, one of the things we're doing is trying to educate parents as well as how important education is for their children to be really supportive to them in that area where you can but uh how important uh is education we know that god is important we know that that's absolutely important but god has given us a great gift and we know that as far as our culture is concerned god bless us with a great gift with the opportunity to have education how important is education oh very important uh very important, uh, and uh, we don't need no more people standing on the corners. Amen. And of, of course, in this computer age, mm -hmm. uh, you almost have to know computers to be able to wash dishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yes, that's true. So that's true. I, I exhort all of the young people that's listening to me, uh, you have a great opportunity to get an education, go on and do it. Do it now because it's going to be more difficult to make a living in this world Ten years from now, than what it is now, if you don't have education. Yes. And, and I'm sure you wouldn't wouldn't have the slightest idea of how many scholarships you've given. Oh no, no. And I tell you the truth, I I, I started this uh, in the religious world back in the early '60s, and of course um, I didn't I didn't promote it on a big 
high level, but I did the best I could. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're on a lot of scholarships. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's wonderful when we can be able to share what we do have to help someone that don't have. Mm -hmm. And uh, the full education program is for that. I'm so glad I saw when I, we was at the church and I was looking at uh, the pictures where he yes. had helped people with the scholarships. I commend you, Reverend Robinson, you. for doing so. Can you tell me how that came about, how God gave you a mind uh, to do that? In 1953, I graduated from Manassas High School in, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. That was a young man that was in my class about lust. I didn't have very much to give him, but I, that's the first scholarship that I gave you, 1953. Mm -hmm. It was $50, but that same young man came out uh, being a principal of a high school for years in, uh, <laughs> in, in Arkansas. Oh, oh, my yeah. He's, yeah, he's passed on now, but anyway, that, that's the first, that's the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. Well, it was just something in me uh, all of my life. Uh, the Bible said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people listening to me now, you you would really have more if you give more. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the secret of getting is giving. Well, mm -hmm. that's a sermon. Say that again. <laughs> the secret of giving is uh, getting is giving. And, and, uh, and to add to that secret of giving is giving in love. And oh not, yeah, oh yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean anything to give and talk about what you're given. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. that's but, a, but but want to give it, have mm -hmm. have a desire, love giving. As mm -hmm. the scripture shows in the book of Exodus, God said to Moses, say to the people, those who have a willing mind mm -hmm. to bring an offering. Right. He, he doesn't want it if you don't want to give it to him. Have mm -hmm. to have a cheerful heart. Right. Nobody wants no, a, a, a person to give you something and they throw it to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you tell him, take it back. <laughs> so God don't want us to throw him something that we don't want to give. Give out of love. Give because... God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And it's mm -hmm. a command. That whosoever believes on him shall not perish, but yes. shall have an everlasting life. Yes. Yes. One All more right. thing. Hallelujah. I know we are uh, coming to the close of this program, but this is such a really special occasion being able to talk to you in person yes. and to be able to present you to the Gospel Kaleidoscope listening audience. You are a father. And I know that a father's role is very important to mm -hmm. a family. And I know that God has a function for a father and a family. We know that a lot of our families and our communities have broken homes. Mm -hmm. Can you say something to our men out there in our community that might help them to understand the importance of their role and the role that God would have them to play in the family? Well, uh, God would have them play the role of uh, being leaders, but a lot of them have thrown it away and they, they have, uh, they're not doing their job, and that's one of the reasons Father's Day is not as popular as it used to be, mm -hmm. uh, because many of the mothers had to be the father and the mother, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, that, that's what it is. Uh, it, it could be, uh, uh, fathers could be looked up like they used to be, but the, the, a lot of them, they lazy and they don't want, they want somebody to give them money. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You never looked at it that way. That's a good mm -hmm. way to look at it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh. I tell a young ladies, if you crazy enough to give somebody your money and you go to work, that sleep, that sleep feels good. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's that's we don't have enough men that who really want to be men that want to take the responsibility of being uh, being a father. Uh -huh. and that is a great responsibility. I was listening at your CD and you were talking mm -hmm. about mom and daddy. Yeah. You know how important that was in your life. I, I, you said it twice actually on the record as we were driving over mm -hmm. here um, thanks to mom and daddy yeah they're you gone know? now mm -hmm. that's very important yeah well I, I tell you Columbus uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to meet Reverend Robinson and we want to also commend you on your work that you have been doing with oh, Gospel yes. Kaleidoscope you know as co-host and associate producer yes. working very hard contributing his time and his talent it's been a joy <laughs> oh praise <laughs> the Lord and I yes. want to thank Reverend Robinson for being our guest today. And I want to thank you also for the audience because I know they want me too. All right. And I want to thank you for my mother because she's crazy about yes. you. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Well, we can't, we can't uh, let the program end without saying, if the Lord be with you. 
I'll make, I'll make the journey. I'll make the journey. It's, that's his latest recording. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure a lot of people want to know why you play that all the time. You play it every day, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I like it. Mm -hmm, I mean, <laughs> right. mm -hmm. I know I'm not there to play all of the songs that I like, but uh, I really do like it. And I think that... A lot of people like it. A lot of people mm -hmm. like it. Amen. Mm -hmm. We, we uh, know that so many people out there, they, they sisters call in and testify, and, and uh, they, it's a very good, a good testimonial selection because we know that he has already promised he won't leave us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, if the Lord be with me, I can make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, Amen. thank the Lord for this program. Hallelujah. I thank God for what he's doing through Gospel Kaleidoscope and through the guests that uh, participate and contribute of time and, and talent, through the co-host and associate co-host. Uh, yes. We have another co-host and associate host. That, Deacon uh, Chuck Charles. Uh, all right. We don't want to leave him out. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. And, of course, we thank uh, Marcus Steinman and Discovery Productions for their contribution to this program. Done a great work with that. So before we um, get ready to sign off, as I say, I'd like Reverend Robinson to say that last word maybe that God is giving you in your heart right now to leave with that public that's listening with you today. Whatever your problem, remember you really don't have no problem. Just give it over to Jesus. For God is the answer to the world's unrest. No use of you going around worrying when God who scooped out the rivers, the lakes, and the oceans, the God that hung the moon and the stars in their places, is able to hold all these things together. You yes. know he's able to fight your battle. Yes. God bless you. God Amen. bless. Columbus? Well, we just want to say thanks again to Reverend Dr. Cleopas Robinson for accepting our invitation. And we truly want to give all of the honor all of the glory and all of the praise to God. For truly, if it had not been for Jesus, we wouldn't be here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Gospel Kaleidoscope, as you know, those that have been listening every week, is a community service organization. And we're trying to do a good work in the community, praise the Lord, and we're so glad to reach out and touch the hearts and souls and minds of those that are doing likewise. I want to ask you, to bow your heads with me in prayer because so many things are going on in the community and we do need to take the time to pray for our community. Yes. Lord Jesus, we come to you at this hour and time. Yes. thank you, Lord. And first of all, we want to thank you for Reverend Cleophus Robinson. Thank you, Lord. And we want to thank you for Columbus Gregory. Thank you, Lord. Chuck Charles Spearman. Yes. And all your people in the community. And we're asking you, Father, to move all oh, by your Holy Spirit yes. and touch the hearts and lives of those that are having tragedies and crises, those that are in trouble, those that are worried, those that are afraid, those that are sick, yes. those that are feeling as though nobody loves them yes, because we know you do love them. And we're asking you right now in the name of Jesus Christ yes. to work a miracle somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I'm asking you right now to go with Reverend Robinson each step he makes, yes, every step he takes. Yes. Oh, let his heart be even more encouraged. Yes. Not only you love him, the community loves him, and I know many people all over the United States and the world love yes. him. Yes. I'm thanking you right now for this service. And I say to you, my listening audience, hallelujah, as I say to you each and every week, praise the Lord, hallelujah, gospel kaleidoscope, is sponsored by the Keep Reaching Foundation and is a charitable, public, and community service organization doing a good work within our community. To you, my listening audience, thank you for listening in. God bless you. And until we meet again, do this for me and for you.
thank God I got a home in yonder city. Well, I won't have to cry, cry no more.
Thank you for tuning in today on Gospel Kaleidoscope with Sherry Gallagher. You may write Gospel Kaleidoscope at Post Office Box 411-83-147 or you may call for information at 1-800-962-7005. We invite you to listen in again on Gospel Kaleidoscope.